Good afternoon. I welcome you to East Castle Place's weekly ecumenical worship service. Um, we are meeting again on Thursdays at 2 o'clock, and we, we do have a live audience. We have people here participating in the service, and I want to remind you if you're watching on channel 955 that you are welcome to come and join us on Thursday afternoons here in Lindsay Hall at 2 o'clock. We do have a limit of 10 people. Today we've got six, seven, counting me, uh, but um, we are socially distanced and masked, and uh, um, we are glad that we have this opportunity again to be face-to-face -face or mask-to-mask, -mask. but we are in person, and that really makes a big difference. Uh, if you're watching on channel 955, it is uh, Sunday, the 15th of November, and if you're part of a, of a congregation or a church tradition that has a church year calendar, um, you may be aware of the fact that we're getting near the end of the church year. And actually next Sunday, the 22nd, will be the last Sunday of the church year, which is traditionally celebrated as Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. And then that means we start over with a new church year, which always begins with the season of Advent, leading into Christmas. Hard to believe we're already there, but if you've, if you've turned on your radio stations, uh, you're probably hearing some Christmas music already. People like to jump the gun with that. But in the church year, we begin with Advent and that time of preparing for our celebration of Christmas. So it's traditional um, at the end of the church year, a lot of our, our lessons for the day uh, focus on, I guess, what you would call the end times. And that's appropriate, I think, this time of year when, when uh, the days are getting shorter and, and darker and uh, the leaves are all scattered off onto the ground, uh, to think about the end of things. And the end times is not meant to be something that's scary for us. It's just these lessons that, that we hear today remind us how very short and temporary our time is here on Earth. And help us to put things in a bigger, eternal perspective. So that will be our theme for the service today. We begin now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, we pray that you would so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that always keeping in mind the end of all things, we may be stirred up to holiness of life here and now, and that we may live with you forever in the world to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the Old Testament book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. Here ends our first reading. The psalm for today is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land, 
Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures evermore. The Gospel for today is from St. Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the Gospel of our Lord. A story is told about a preacher who was preaching to his congregation about heaven and the eternal joy that awaits each Christian on the other side. He paused for dramatic effect and asked, Now, how many of you here want to go to heaven? Everybody's hands went up except for an eight-year-old boy who was sitting in the front pew. The pastor asked, What's the matter, son? Don't you want to go to heaven, too? Yes, the boy replied, but I thought you were going to make up a load to go right now. <laughs> now, I assume that if I asked you that same question, how many of you want to go to heaven, all of you would raise your hands. But I'm also guessing that like that eight-year-old boy, not too many of us would like to go to heaven right now, at this very moment. Most of us, whatever our age or life situation, still feel like we have a lot of living to do right here on earth. Most of us or, or many of us would rather not even think about that day when our time will come to leave this world and move on to that greater glory God has prepared for us in the next world. I've heard a number of stories, and I don't doubt that some of these stories are true, about young children and how they seem to be so connected to God and the world beyond this one in a way that most of us adults are not. I've read one very poignant story about a mother overhearing her four-year-old daughter speaking to her newborn sister and saying, tell me about God, I'm forgetting. Stories like these remind us that the longer we live here on this earth, the harder it becomes for us to keep our hearts and our minds focused on God and on the things that are eternal. We live 
in a material world, surrounded constantly by material stuff. In the words of a popular hymn, we live in a vain world which charms us with pleasures and treasures. I know that as a parent, I've seen this seductive materialism slip into the life of my own family. I remember when our children were little and when we celebrated Christmas, they seemed to be content to hear the story of Jesus' birth and talk about all the angels and the animals at the manger. But then as they started to get a little bit older, when Christmas rolled around, it would usually just be them handing me a list of things that they would like to receive as Christmas gifts. But I suppose that's not so different from everybody else. Whether it is Legos or Alexis that we're coveting, we all fall into that charming allure of materialism. We lose sight of the things that are eternal and set our hearts on pleasures that simply cannot last. I think that in all the years that I've been a pastor, I have probably preached about this topic more than any other. And the reason I preach about it so much is because Jesus talked about it so much. About as much as any other topic. Jesus knows how easy it is for us to be led astray. And so often, with challenging and astonishing words, he reminded his followers that nothing on this earth, no matter how grand or glorious, nothing on this earth will last forever. Not even some of those things we might consider to be holy. For example, in today's Gospel lesson, which I read earlier, Jesus and his disciples are standing outside the magnificent temple in the city of Jerusalem. This majestic building had been a holy place of worship for Jesus' people for many centuries. It was an enormous structure with connecting courtyards, and it was graced with a great white marble facade. Its enormous stones spoke of solidarity and strength. And yet, of this holy and magnificent place, Jesus predicts in our Gospel lesson, not one stone will be left here upon another. All of it will be thrown down. Those are amazing words. And yet, in the year 70 AD, the Roman general Titus destroyed that very temple. Jesus' words may have sounded sacrilegious to those who first heard them, but they proved to be true. And they remind us of a powerful truth in our own lives. Nothing on this earth lasts forever. Many of us seek comfort from material things because we're looking for security in an insecure world. If only we have enough money in the bank, enough clothes in our closet, enough toys to divert our attention, then we figure that we'll be able to weather the storms that life hands us. Jesus is well aware of the fact that our lives on this earth are anything but secure. In today's lesson, he goes on to tell his disciples that their future will bring wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, violence, and in those words, Jesus reminds both them and us that nothing on this earth is stable or secure. None of us knows what the future will bring. And we've certainly been reminded of that in this year, 2020, with the pandemic surrounding us everywhere. 
None of us knows what the future will bring. But we do know, most certainly along the way, there's going to be some bad stuff. Most of us don't want to be reminded of that fact. But Jesus still tells us the truth. He tells it like it is. Not to scare us, but to help us keep our priorities straight. You see, a lot of us are fooled into thinking that material things can make our lives perfect, or at least more manageable. A number of years ago, a survey by the Barna Research Group revealed that the average American adult believes that he or she needs an additional eight to $11,000 per year to live comfortably. Tracking studies show, however, that even when adults reach or exceed the income levels to which they aspired, they still claim that they need another eight to $11,000 a year to live comfortably. That survey reveals how easy it is for us to be fooled into thinking that material possessions can bring us happiness. When we're looking for contentment from material things, we'll never have enough. We will never be satisfied. So what do you need to live comfortably? What do you need to experience joy even when life here on earth is so very uncertain and unstable? What do you need? Well, Christians, I think we all know the answer. The question is not really what do you need, but who do you need? Who is the one who will be there for you when this vain world's pleasures and treasures are gone? When the Legos are all broken and the Lexus is a rusty piece of junk, who will be there to lift you up? The same one who's been there for you all along. The one who is here even now. You know his name, and he knows yours. Jesus is the one who can truly satisfy. Jesus is the one who can bring you comfort that will outlast all the storms of this life. Amen. We continue now with the intercessory prayers. I will conclude each petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and if you wish, you may reply, hear our prayer. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, as we continue to live in this time of bewilderment and fear, we ask you to give us the courage to take care of one another as Jesus did. We pray for all those who are ill, especially those who are frightened and alone, for those who cannot access health care, for those who are homeless and lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of sadness and grief, we ask you to give us words to comfort one another. For those who are dying, and for those who have already died from this virus, for those who tend to them, and for those who have no one to tend to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of our own anxiety, we ask you to give us the courage to support one another as you would. For those who are unexpectedly unemployed, for employers who share what they can, for our government and financial institutions and those who lead them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of our struggle to ensure a healthy future for all who live on this planet, we ask you to give us the hope that surpasses our current understanding. For health care workers, spiritual leaders, and our faith communities, 
for artists and poets, for prophets and teachers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of our growing awareness that all of life on earth is connected, we ask for the heart to respect and cherish all of life, that all peoples recognize that we are all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we trust in you and in your power working through us. Please hear and answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And we join in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here or tuning in today. If you're watching on channel 955, we will conclude the service with the traditional Thanksgiving hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving. And may God continue to bless our community and our whole world. In Jesus' name, amen.